quite exciting full house. A lot of creatives in the house. My appreciation to Hassan and the team, you know, the volunteers, all the passionate guys who you know, put this thing together. Congrats again. Um, I'd like to start my presentation, um, you know, the way presentations normally end. You can go <laughs> by saying thank you um, for coming out. Thank you for, you know, sitting here and trying to listen to the things I'm going to share. And I hope it will be, it will be worth your while. My name is Anakwe Jodhia, and um, I sell shapes and colors and alphabets for a living. Um, over the past 10 years of my, of my career, I've done quite a bit of work for you know, banks and individuals, uh, churches, musicians, and, and the like. Um, I also have some side you know, hustles, <laughs> uh, a t-shirt brand, and um, a training institute called, called Virtu. Yeah. Um, so today, what I'd like to share is a philosophy I've been entertaining for quite, quite, quite some time. Um, you know, as a creative person, I realize that we don't um, examine, and then I'll, I think I'll be here. We don't um, examine, we don't analyze what it is that we do. Um, and because of that, you know, I try not to see myself as a, as a creative person. I try to see myself, I take, take more pride in seeing myself as a problem solver. So in analyzing my work, I discovered a pattern, um, which is just beyond you know, trying to find out the kind of shapes that I use in my work, or the colors, or the, or the fonts, the typography style, et cetera, et cetera. Far from that. It was more what influenced you know, the work that I do, what, um, how it influences my process, you know, how my process has become better for it. I try to see the big picture and then you know, the minute details, as, as everyone does. Um, but then I usually pray that I become quite lucky enough to see what I call the unseen. Um, so this presentation is what I call future history. And what do I mean when I say future history? Coming to the way that I do in terms of identity design, um, I've realized when I discover work, when I discover insights, it makes the work better, as opposed to me concocting, coming up with you know, funny shapes and then imbuing it with uh, brand values and the likes. It's more meaningful, I think it becomes more authentic, and I think it becomes more successful when I'm able to discover something about the work. I mean, prior to this, you get by, you do great work, aesthetically it's great, technically it's you know, sound. It looks good, like they say, um, in reference to Ibrahim's work, you know, it's nice, etc. And then you fall into this loop where success starts to go into your head. You become afraid to step out. Everything has become premium. Everything has to become polished. You know, everything has to become perfect. You're really afraid of you know, having any kinks in your, in your armor. Um, you start to believe in formula. <laughs> and that's what I see happening, or I saw happening within the, the, the sector ending up in us you know, all becoming something that you know, I call sheepism. We've all become sheeps. Because we end up reading the same things, we end up watching the same movies, doing the same research. If I, if I'm looking, if I have a piece of work and I'm doing a Google you know, desktop research, the same things we'll see. We read from the same people. There is nobody, when I say nobody, I mean there's no body of work coming from our part of town. So in the end, we end up creating more or less the same thing. I mean, what is the difference between work created by a creative in Ghana and a creative in the States or UK or Switzerland? Can you tell the difference? In analyzing the work, I broke it down into three areas. The first area being, you know, I rediscover work. So just like the proverbial sheep, you know, we were lost and now we're found. So I discovered discovery. And in trying to understand what I mean by that, next slide, I realized we have like a very rich tapestry. I mean, I'm not the one. Our folklore, our festivals, our music, um, our dance, sculpture, ex I mean, very, very wide, very, very rich. But for some reason, we kind of think it's passe. We kind of think, you know, uh, somebody does something with some nice Edin craft. Oh, yeah, it's Edin craft. I've seen it done before. Da, 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 da. It's boring. Oh, can't take it. has been done before. What's all this about? You know, we want something new and fresh. Quick exercise. Name me. Ready? 
five building class symbols that are not Jinyame, Sankofa, Akuma. Quickly. Mm -hmm. All right. Awesome. Let's make it easier. Five Ghanaian dance, which is not Adwa, Kete, Bobobo, Agbaja, or... <laughs> easier still, easier still. Five living Ghanaian... <laughs> Five living Ghanaian artists, prominent, who are not Ibrahim or Eugene. Okay, okay, very, very easy. This one should be very, very easy. Five of their works, name them. So the problem isn't that we don't have it. It's because we don't know what we have. The rediscovery stage, we kind of skip it and try to align ourselves with what's happening in the West, in Japan, God knows where else. Oh, minimalism and Swiss art and this and that and the other. Forgetting we have this wealth of creativity. So this rediscovery stage isn't about, you know, just knowing about our history, but trying to understand, you know, who we are as a people. Next slide. So after the, after the discovery stage, Oh yeah, sorry. This was basically the combination of everything. It's going to get to the point where, as we're rediscovering, you know, what it is that we are, who it is that we are as a people, we find that we become, you know, more comfortable where the natural hair, um, you know, um, uh, movement has begun, where um, um, the no bleaching <coughs> movement has begun, all, all that kind of thing. So <laughs> then we get to the reimagined stage. I mean, nothing crazy about this. This. this I mean, every creative knows what to do. Next slide things that we see as mundane, so Sobolo becomes more premium. Next slide. Um, in Kuto, I mean, I think I just saw Naya somewhere there. You know, trying to reimagine what we've seen, you know, uh, and don't pay attention to. Next slide. And then the third portion was to repackage it. New, super improved. <laughs> Next slide. So it's basically the same thing that we've seen, paying attention to the fact that this is something that we have. This is how we can reimagine it, and this is how we can repackage it. Now this quote, we will package your food as if it were a skill, skill, silk, blah, 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 a silk scarf. <laughs> as though it was a skill, so, ah! uh, yeah. <laughs> The reason why I love this, you know, it's, 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 it's like a, a guiding light for me. It was said by um, more or less like a one-man agency, and they were pitching for the business um, of Harrods. We all know Harrods, you know, big. Um, and there were all these, you know, well-known Goliath agencies in the, you know, as part of the pitch. And these guys came about and said, you know, for your packaging, because they want to do packaging for their food um, section, for your packaging, we're going to package it as though it were a silk. I said it right scarf and that won them the business without even showing one piece of work because you would have come to it oh it's packaging uh, it's fruit packaging so there's fruit what juice that cup that, that, that ice etc rediscover reimagine repackage next slide so this was an uproar on social media and They've taken, you can go, yeah. They've taken a, a hinema and they're selling it for God knows what price and that kind of thing. Yes, because you see what you have as passe, as mundane. Rediscover, reimagine. So they don't call it a hinema because it makes it so sacred. You can't touch it. They call it a thong sandal. <laughs> I mean, it's made by Valentino, so you can check it out online. And it cost so much. I mean, I checked this morning, and they had given it a slash. So I think it was thousand four hundred something dollars, and it's now eight hundred dollars. Um, yeah, so that's food for thought. So repackage. Next slide. I love seeing things like this. You know, I'm tired of 
pulling staple pins out of my mouth. And <laughs> next slide. And you can see a resurgence. I don't know what was happening, but like I said, as I started to analyze, I realized people were doing this without probably knowing that they were doing it. Without probably knowing that they were doing the you know, rediscovery thing, going through the reimagining thing, and going through the repackage thing. So this brand called Better Curry, you know, takes Northern Fabrics, next slide, and creates fantastic stuff. This brand called Ruth by Linan does the same thing, and then, next slide. And another fantastic brand called Raffia, they're also doing fantastic things. Common coconut. When I close in the evening, I'm going home, and I see all my guys with their wheelbarrows selling coconuts. What's the difference? Next slide, next slide. These guys go a step further and try to do the same thing. Repackage it, reimagine it. Sorry, yeah, and rediscover it. So by shaving everything off, it's the same thing that we know, but by shaving off, you know, and branding it, when I mean physically branding it, you know, immediately it becomes something you can charge, you know, maybe five CDs, as opposed to normal two CDs, four, and create a whole, you know, business out of that. Next slide. I've never hidden my love for this brand. Yes, it's not Ghanaian, but I love it and love it and love it. Every presentation I do, I try to share it, and I don't have any shares in it either. <laughs> um, it's called Divine. It's a chocolate, um, naturally. Um, but why do I love it? Because it brings together everything I've been talking about without realizing the provenance is there. You know it's from Ghana. It doesn't hide that fact. It makes great use of our symbols. The cocoa content is 70%, unlike the normal 20% if you, if you love sneakers. I love chocolates a lot too. And the best part of it is that it's fair trade. So the farmers are getting a good deal out of the whole thing. You know? So the question we ask is, again, ah, chocolate, 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 we have chocolate, we've seen chocolate, but somebody will take the pain to understand, to reimagine it, and to repackage it. It's something that's been going on, but like I said, we probably haven't realized, next slide, what has been happening. Simple stage. So after developing or trying to understand how this thing worked, I realized it dovetailed into a process I've started you know, using for my work for the last couple of years, next slide, which I call you know, branding crap. Branding crap is basically you know, mashing up two words, branding, which we all know, because if I try to explain what branding is, we won't finish, and editing crap, branding and editing crap. I love branding, and I see Edinkra as not just you know, the symbols, but in the wider context, as something which, um, I think, yeah, it, it, it captures who we are as, as creative people in Ghana. Um, next slide. So quick history. So Edinkra, as we know, the king of uh, German, called uh, King, king Edinkra, and he tried to fight the Ashantis, and of course, if you try that, <laughs> and so he got killed, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So Edinkra, as we know, means, you know, goodbye, farewell, and it was used for, uh, or currently use it for, or was used for funerals, you know, more sober um, or somber occasions. Um, but then I kind of, this is a bit of a mind warp, I kind of branding crud the editing crud <laughs> by reimagining it, next slide, and by trying to, you know, let it work for me. So editing name and cra message, and which is basically branding. A good name, a good name does what was the proverb? Is better than riches, etc. And you know, branding, you want to keep your name good, your reputation, etc., etc., etc. Next slide. So then Branding Crack came, to, came out of me trying to understand the rediscovery, the reimagine, the repackage stage, where I realized I needed my work to have international awareness. There's no point saying, yes, it's ours, and we do that, that, and it's in some corner somewhere, nobody cares about it. I wanted it to have maximum exposure. I wanted it to have international awareness. I wanted it to also be culturally relevant, and then it should also empower local symbolism. So everything that I, I've, I've done for the last couple of years is guided by this philosophy, which I call branding crowd, which emanated out from me understanding that I've been trying to rediscover things and reimagine things and repackage things without knowing. So I'll you know, encourage all of us to ask yourself, because we hardly question what it is that we do. We do it, we do it, we do it. Because the more we question, the more you might probably see, hmm, what your motivations are. <laughs> you know, I'm just doing this for the money. I'm just doing it to meet, you know, move society forward, whatever it is. Um, so I'll just show a few examples of what I mean. Next slide. I love this, I, I didn't do this by the way, but these are things, like I said, people are doing and maybe they haven't realized what it is that they are doing. I'm not saying what I, what I you know, the way I've kind of structured 
this whole presentation uh, on branding crime means um, they should ascribe to it, but I think they've been doing it without probably even understanding it. You can see international awareness, it's A and a P. I mean, it's very universal. But then they've embedded the Dinkra symbol in there. The Sankofa bird is embedded in the, you know, uh, is it black power? <laughs> the aluta, you know, the fist. And it gives it a, a totally different meaning. Next slide. I love this because it is not your typical Herald Shield University logo. It is like a, a latter day Edinkra of some sort. You know, it's pure branding as far as I'm concerned. You know, if you want to go Ill Illuminati on it, I don't know whether that, that's the all seeing eye. But I can see <laughs> I can see pillars, I can see an institution of learning, I can see it's like a temple of education or whatever. I can see the Asisigua in there. It's just marvelous. The other one is something I, I, I designed as a freebie, um, and I share it a lot on Mother's Day, where it's a combination of the heart, the love heart, which, again, very universal. We know what it stands for. And then the Dinkra symbol. Who knows what the Dinkra symbol is? You are not allowed. <laughs> yes, so talking about you know, mother's love in terms of disciplining the child. Of course, if I'm disciplining my child, I'm not killing the child, marrying it, marrying it with the whole concept of you know, love giving you a nice symbol for, for uh, Mother's Day. Next slide. And then these three are also designed for, for these clients. Um, Stratcom is a PR communications firm, um, and they also love using you know, our, our, our cultural elements in terms of providing solutions for their clients. Um, and because they are you know, a PR firm, they like a lot of talking and things. So in coming up with the identity for them, um, because they like you know, a lot of talking, <laughs> we thought we would is that the right word? We would uh, chillize or whatever it is, they have an NT for them. So then the all in Stratcom became a proper all, hence the two C's also communicating international awareness, empowering local symbolism. Anti Oboshi recently, I'm sure if you guys, most of you guys might know them, they were fashionista, Ga fashionista, Ghana, some time ago. Um, and just like, you know, Batman becoming Samini, they're now Anti Oboshi. And Anti Oboshi, still has the same you know, premium quality, still tries to be cutting edge, still tries to be you know, highly um, um, fashion conscious, et cetera, et cetera. And developing that for them, they wanted you know, an accent somewhere. But then more and more we realized it was looking very Scandinavian. <laughs> so then the rediscovery process, the O in the Originally, it was at the top, but I felt, no, there's something not right about it. We're talking, you know, the name is very, very roots, if you, if you know what I mean. But then how can we now put an accent on the top, making the whole thing look very Scandinavian, very Germanic? I don't know. Um, so yeah, in doing the, the, the discovery process, the Ank, the Equabador, and lastly, the female symbol, you know, the international female symbol uh, came together to form that. And then it captured everything that came together for the brand. With the Ghana Chamber of Commerce, the whole idea of commerce using the cowries, so it's embedded in the, in the G and the C and the C. Next slide. Things I love, like I said, people are doing it without probably not understanding how they fit within the whole, um, um, you know, the whole movement. Mukase chick, Mukase, loving the word chick or chic. <laughs> Mukase chick, very contemporary, very upmarket, but marrying it. So international awareness is there, empowering local, local symbolism is there. Next slide. By the time I finish saying next slide, I think. <laughs> so these ones, not for the sake of their design, but the bravery in going ahead with, you know, uh, uh, um, I won't say local names names which resonate more with us. So Tona Tong, the first time I heard it, it blew my mind. I thought, wow, I wish I'd come up with this. This is just so, so I don't know about the, the smiley face, but the name itself was just fantastic. And I think as a hint, if you're, any, you know, if you're a brand designer, identity designer here, if your name is exotic, don't add any funny symbols to it. <laughs> I think that's, it was a perfect name without that unnecessary smiley face. But again, so Tonaton blew my mind. Casa Perecon blows my mind. I heard Tissot. I go, Tissot. Tissot, it says Tissot. Blew my mind. And then Moja, and then Bisa, and then, you know, Kantanka, African Star. These are just fantastic, brave brands. So Bisa is, a, is an app. Uh, you, can, you can ask, you know, health questions, and it kind of 
It's like a WebMD kind of thing. Next slide. And the reason why I put him here, you know, I use Nanakofi as an example of somebody who has bridged and is doing branding crap without necessarily calling it branding crap, where he's taken a, a, a kind of, um, you know, a medium and owned it for us. A medium which has been used to uh, deteriorate in effect, you know, showing Africa in a bad light and the kind of thing, and using it to turn perception. You know, image is very, very powerful. The more you see superheroes, that's why Black Panther rocks. And the more you see superheroes who are, you know, blonde hair, blue eyed, and all masculine, and you're thinking to yourself, hmm, are we always going to be, you know, the, we shoot in the air. I don't know how who trained those guys, but always shoot like this. <laughs> you know, I was going to be the villains and that kind of thing. So he's able to use the medium to change perceptions and in a very real way. These are some of the questions I ask. So what is it that you're doing? Question yourself. What are your motivations? And by the way, I designed his identity for it because it was so hard to pin him down. Next slide. Nobody needs introduction to this. I'm sure we know where this is. Where is this? Yes, so it brings together, again, probably without understanding, or not understanding, without knowing what, um, how they fit into this whole branding crime movement. The first time I came across it you know, years back, I thought, oh, what a fantastic concept. I mean, I've seen it done in, you know, um, on a smaller scale, um, you know, boutique um, hotels, but on a grand scale, with a lot of passion and confidence, just booming out there, it brought all the elements together. Total confidence, total bravery, total boldness. And at the end of it all, it has become you know, one of the, as you already know, next slide. This is stuck. And nobody needs an introduction to this either. So Chalote, again, same old system, da 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 da, but taking the whole thing, reimagining it to see how it applies to our realities today. I, I, I don't think, do people still go to Abu Achiri Festival? So that's what's happening. There is something bubbling, and I'm hoping that we'll all identify what it is. In my own small way, because of the work that I do, this is what I was able to come up with to understand, ah, oh, I can see these things happening. And when it clicks, it blows up. So Branding Cry, you know, is for the brave. You know, in your own way, I'm hoping that we'll discover insightful things that will inform our work. And it's not just a matter of just discovering insightful things. It's trying to find out how you can leverage these things. So you found out that this is this, this is that, but how can you leverage it, you know, using your own creativity? You know, um, you know in future history, like I mentioned in the beginning, isn't a kind of, you know, abstract notion. I, I'd hate for it to be that. Um, I think it's just the foundation of what I've been talking about, because we have a very storied past and a brave new world ahead. You know, and I, I, like I said, I can sense things just aligning. Everything's just falling in place at this moment. You know, and, and in that movie, you know, there has been an awakening. I think there's an awakening happening. Um, and we're on the cusp of delivering, you know, something of a creative, you know, nothing short of a creative revolution. Not for its own sake, not for its own sake, but something that's gonna permeate our lives and make a real difference. And, you know, we add some money in your pockets as well. <laughs> so future history, my, um, you know, fellow creative friends here is happening now. Thank you. Thank you very much.